In this lesson, we will talk about three commonly used discrete probability distributions. These three distributions are the binomial, the geometric, and the Poisson distributions. Let's first consider when a random variable will have a binomial distribution. Consider the following scenario. Suppose I'm going to roll a die 10 different times, and I want to know the number of of those 10 rolls that I will roll either a 3 or 6. This scenario, the number of rolls that end up with a 3 or a 6 will have a binomial distribution. Let's see why. We use a binomial distribution when we are counting the number of successes, and we call that x, that's our random variable x, in a fixed number of trials n n is a fixed number, it is known. In our problem, n was 10. I'm rolling a die 10 different times, and I want to know the number of times I roll a 3 or a 6. So my success is whether I roll a 3 or, six, three or a 6. If I roll a 1, 2, 4, or 5, I'm going to consider that a failure. That's not what I'm interested in. So when there are only two possible outcomes on each trial, we call them success or failure. Success does not necessarily have to be a positive outcome. It is just the outcome that you are, that you are counting, and we just call that success for convenience purposes. So in our problem, a success is rolling a 3 or a 6. A failure is rolling a 1, 2, 4, or 5. We can use the binomial distribution because our trials are independent. The probability of rolling a 3 or 6 on my second roll does not depend on what I rolled on the first roll. So my trials are independent. The probability of success, P, does not change from trial to trial. In my problem, the probability of success, the probability of rolling a 3 or a 6, is 1 -third. When a random variable has a binomial distribution, x equal the number of successes, we designate this by saying x has a binomial np distribution where n is the fixed number of trials and p is the probability of success on each and every trial. So there are two parameters that determine the binomial distribution. If you say a random variable has a binomial distribution, you must give two parameters. You must give the parameter n and the parameter p. Let's look at another example. If we let x, our random variable, equal the number of queens selected from a standard deck of cards when drawing 20 cards from the deck with replacement. If we let x, which is the number of queens selected, what distribution will that random variable have? It will have a binomial distribution. Why? Because we are counting the number of successes, the number of queens. There are only two possible outcomes on each trial. You either get a queen or you don't get a queen. And the trials are independent. Why are they independent? The probability of drawing a queen on the first draw is 4 out of 52. There are 4 queens and a deck, and a deck has 52 cards. So the probability of selecting a queen is 4 out of 52. Because we are selecting with replacement, once we draw our first card, we put it back into the deck and we shuffle. And the probability of drawing a queen on the second draw is also 4 out of 52 because we are drawing with replacement. So x, the number of queens, does have a binomial distribution. When a random variable has a binomial distribution, you must give it two parameters, n and p. How many trials are we doing? We are doing 20 trials. We are drawing 20 cards. What is the probability of success? The probability of drawing a queen on any one draw? We said it is 4 out of 52 which simplifies to 1 out of 13 if you want. So our random variable x has a binomial distribution with parameters 20 and 4 50 seconds. Now let's talk about when a random variable has the geometric distribution. 
Let's go back to our first example. We're going to change it slightly. Again, I'm rolling a die. This time, I don't know how many times I'm going to roll the die, but I'm going to keep rolling the die until I get a 3 or a 6. If I define a random variable as the number of rolls needed to roll a 3 or a 6, then that random variable will have a geometric distribution. So to use the geometric distribution, we must be counting the number of trials, that is our random variable y, needed to get the first success. When we are counting the number of trials, we count the trial that the first success happened. So if I'm rolling my die, and on my third roll, on my first roll I rolled a 1, on my second roll I rolled a 5, on the third roll I rolled a 6, the number of trials needed to get my first success, the answer would be 3 in that problem. So when the success, when the success occurs, that counts as a trial. So if we are counting the number of trials needed to get the first success, when there are only two possible outcomes on each trial, either success or failure, I either roll a 3 or 6, that's my success, or I roll something else, that's my failure. Again, trials must be independent. The probability of getting a 3 or 6 must be independent of any previous trial. So y, the number of trials needed to get the first success, under this scenario, we, the random variable y has a geometric distribution with parameter p. One parameter defines the geometric distribution. The only parameter you need to know is the probability of success on each trial. So for the problem where I'm rolling a die, y, the number of trials needed to get my first 3 or 6, will have a geometric one-third distribution because the probability that I roll a 3 or 6 is one-third. Let's consider one more example. If we let y be the number of card draws from a standard deck of cards needed to get the first queen when drawing with replacement, then y, the number of draws, will have a geometric distribution with parameter 4 out of 52. Why does this random variable have a geometric distribution? Because we are counting the number of trials, the number of draws needed to get our first queen. There are only two possible outcomes. Either I get a queen or I don't get a queen. And trials are independent because I'm drawing with replacement. The probability that I draw a queen on the first draw is 4 out of 52. Because I'm drawing with replacement, the probability of getting a queen on the second draw remains at 4 out of 52. So in this case, y, our random variable, has a geometric 4 50 seconds distribution. Now let's consider our last distribution, the Poisson distribution. When will a random variable have a Poisson distribution? When you are counting the number of successes in a given time interval. When there are only two possible outcomes, success or failure, when outcomes are independent, a success does not change the probability of a success in a later time interval, and when you know the average number of successes in the given time interval, we call that lambda. We say that the random variable z, which is the number of successes in a given time period, has a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. The only parameter you need to know is the average number of successes in a given time interval. Let's consider an example. If we let z be the number of people served in a 15 minute period at a local fast food restaurant when on average 31 and a half people are served in a 15 minute period. Then z, the number of people served in a 15 minute time period, we'll have a Poisson distribution with parameter 31.5.
So just as a recap, the binomial distribution is used when you are counting the number of successes in a fixed number of trials. The geometric distribution is used when you are counting the number of trials needed to get your first success. And the Poisson distribution is used when you are counting the number of successes in a given time interval. And there are three commonly used discrete probability distributions.